क्या आप आई की तैयारी कर रहे हैं और कोचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट को ढाई लाख तक की फीस नहीं पे करना चाहते अगर हाँ तो बाईस हजार में घर बैठ के स्टडी एक यू के पेनड्राइव कोर्स के साथ आप आई की तैयारी कर सकते हैं आज ही विजिट करें स्टडी आई क्यू डॉट कॉम वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल माई डियर फ्रेंड्स आई एम प्रशांत मावानी लेट्स हैव अ पॉजिटिव स्टार्ट विद इब्राहिम लेकिन आई एम स्लो वॉकर बट आई नेवर वॉक बैक डायरेक्शन इज more important than your speed as far as your life and your progress is concerned with this uh, prudent increase is the first editorial it is about uh, monetary policy committee now monetary means money simple is that right if you you know i know this thing that uh, in economics uh, or in this uh, financial word they use uh, this sort of terminologies like fiscal rather than saying financial and money uh, rather than using the word money they use this monetary so any policy that is associated with money is called monetary policy now we have this monetary policy committee in our country that uh, decides uh, this interest rates uh, whether it will go up or down uh, but uh, before moving into that area let me give you a brief history of uh, things now the main job of rbi you know it's a central bank so interest rate right if interest interest rates are raised if uh, if they go up that means if you have taken a loan then you will be paying bit extra money because the interest rate has gone up at the same time if you have deposited some money in your bank then you will get extra interest as well isn't it because now interest rate has gone up so you can see here that uh, a rise or hike in rate is good for uh, depositors but it is not that good for loan takers now earlier on what used to happen in our country that uh, rbi governor right uh, was uh, faced with uh, multiple or you can say various uh, different stakeholders they were demanding different things from rbi like uh, government uh, will always like to see loan uh, rates are at or interest rate is at uh, cheap level because uh, if uh, loans are Uh, loans are cheap or they are easily available or the interest rate is down then of course you know now that uh, people will you know it will it will provide that nudge uh, for this business community to to borrow loan and invest in economy and in this way it will revive uh, it will revive the whole economy uh, more jobs will be created more tax will be coming to government everyone will be happy so government has always and around the world you will find this thing that governments uh, they love to see this uh, interest rate going down uh, this is one side the other side is uh, all those people who have uh, deposited their money you can uh, uh, you can say pensioners you can have uh, this because you know when inflation kicks in then government has to adjust this uh, pension money so uh, inflation goes up uh, at the same time there are people out there who will benefit out of it because the money that they are getting as pension Uh, it will go up as well uh, same thing happen, happens or applies to this uh, government servants so you can see here there is a contradiction right uh, contradiction in the sense that there are few stakeholders who want to see cheaper loan rate there are other ones who want to see higher loan rate uh, then you have borrowers they have their own concern so it was creating huge amount of pressure on rbi and uh, the blame was you know been thrown on rbi governor so a committee was formed urjit patel committee urjit patel is uh, at present our uh, governor governor of rbi uh, he's the same gentleman he was uh, appointed as a head of this uh, committee and uh, this committee recommended that we need to have monetary policy committee this committee will have three members uh, from rbi and uh, then you can have three members uh, that that are appointed by government so in total you have six members and uh, together they will decide so the more heads you have the more people you have on board right of course uh, these three members are experts so uh, it will give a sort of balanced view uh, as far as this interest rate is concerned so this was uh, decided and now we have this mpc and uh, one more thing that i would like to add here is that just in case if uh, there is a tie of what if three members if rbi members are saying that uh, interest rate should go up and if government appointed members are saying that interest rate should go down then uh, rbi governor's uh, vote or his uh, uh, stand uh, will be taken as the final one so 
this is how this MPC works. Now, uh, what we find in news is that uh, this MPC has decided that interest rates uh, will go up or they have raised, in fact, uh, interest rate by 25 basis point. Now, what is basis point all about? Very easy to understand. Pay attention here. 50 basis point means 0.5 percent. That means half percent. So when we say 25 basis point, we are talking about 0.5 five percent I hope this thing is clear to you as well now why do we see this uh, increase and decrease uh, here you can see that uh, one of the main reason is uh, controlling inflation is is one of the main agenda of this MPC uh, to uh, you know to to increase or, or one of the main reason to to increase this uh, 25 basis point is uh, is is to control inflation because uh, as per this uh, you know new rules when this MPC was created it was decided that uh, now inflation controlling uh, will be the main uh, you know duty of RBI and it will do it with the help of this you know flowing keeping an eye on uh, the flow of money and of course for that they have to keep in they have to take into consideration many different things that are going on in our country. It's it's very simple to understand, but they have to go through many other things. As far as your general studies is concerned, you don't have to be expert in economics, uh, right? Uh, you need to have basic understanding of how things work, and that's more than enough. So the panel, this MPC, uh, is uh, tasked with, uh, with uh, targeting inflation at a 4% level, plus and minus 2% is allowed. So... The minimum that it can go is 2% and the maximum that it can go is 6%. Ideally, in real world, uh, somewhere around 3%, uh, 3 to 3.50 is a good rate of inflation. But if it crosses this 4 and at present, it is clocking somewhere around 5, which is a matter of concern. And the reason is that, uh, see, we know that it's continuing this volatility as far as this crude oil prices is concerned you know still we haven't uh, got green signal or this uh, whole issue of USA uh, forcing sanctions on Iran and we are purchasing huge amount of oil from Iran so this thing is uh, still not clear so this is one of the reason a price can go up apart from that you know this uh, issues and troubles that are going on in this part of the world that has also kicked in inflation then we have this Russia and China and this trade war is going on that can impact this whole global supply chain so keeping in mind all this uh, various different things geopolitical tensions and supply disruptions uh, they have decided that it will go up uh, and one of the reason why money or this interest rate has been increased is because a demand and supply it's a very simple to understand yet very important rule that we find in our economy this is something that happens with us on a regular basis like i'll give you one example if i give you 500 rupees uh, right uh, I'll, i allot you 500 rupees and if you have to travel uh, from delhi to mumbai uh, with only this 500 rupees then i'm sure that you will look for the cheapest train or bus that is available right uh, you will never think about uh, a flight and uh, you will also not spend money, unnecessary money, for purchasing bottled water and eating this and that, right? So here, the situation is that you have very limited supply of money. At the same time, if I give you the same task, right, uh, from Delhi to Mumbai, but here now I give you 50,000 rupees. So first of all, you will get a, a good flight. Uh, you will try to get a good uh, luxurious seat as well uh, you may spend uh, money for that uh, 200 300 whatever expensive uh, coffee that you get on airport you'll buy something else whilst you're traveling you know on, whilst you are waiting for your flight so in this situation the supply of money is high so the value of money has gone down in the same way right what happens in real life is that if supply of money is high in the market and you know that we have limited uh, items that are available in market. So it will be just like you know that uh, you have uh, ten, uh, you have ten kids in a class, and you have uh, ten chocolates. So everyone will get one. So there will be no competition. If you have two chocolates, then the competition will go up. And if you have hundred, uh, then everyone is you know you'll be aware about that they will at least get ten. You know even if they. They will get at least get three, four, even if there is a competition. So, so this is how it works. Uh, if the money flow is uh, high, uh, then the value of money will go down. And to make sure that the supply of money or this value of money is maintained, uh, interest rate 
uh, will be hiked so that it will become a bit expensive and in this way this uh, too much money chasing limited uh, goods uh, there will be a you can say a, it will work like a speed breaker so this is how they control it i hope uh, these things are clear to you so this is uh, one more item that i would like to add, add here is this one fiscal slippage you know nowadays uh, government has decided to give this MSP uh, increase in MSP and uh, at the same time we have also seen that uh, loan waivers and all these things are also going on because elections are not far so because of this thing the money that uh, your state government or central government uh, will have and this money should be used for development purpose and other things uh, for invest for creating investment climate for creating infrastructure health and education and all these things because everything will create a good environment for business uh, isn't it if you if you create good education centers then you will have talented people they will they will come with new products and uh, new services uh, they will get job so they will start paying tax and everything so this is how the whole economy works so this is uh, a very important topic of course as you know and uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, things are clear to you now and uh, one more item that you can add here is that uh, rainfall right uh, you know many times you might have heard about this thing that your basics like ncrts and other uh, basic general studies subjects uh, you you need to have a good grip on them uh, to understand what's going on so here is a good example rainfall now if, uh, if we if we study geography then we find geography economics you know you find this thing that uh, in our country we have this much different types of uh, soil different types of terrain these things are part of your geography so you know it very well that plain areas right uh, like uh, Uttar Pradesh Bihar all these areas they are having this Ganga belt so they have fertile land at the same time mountain area they don't have that advantage now rainfall distribution again part of your geography if you if you study economics uh, then you find that uh, uh, in our country, even today, 50% of agricultural land is uh, is not having this irrigation facility. And when you read this type of news, uh, that uh, uh, there are 36 subdivisions, uh, and we find that uh, more than one fifth of this uh, 36 uh, subdivisions uh, they are facing shortfalls in rain. And if they don't have uh, good irrigation facilities so production will come down if the production of food will come down then you have limited food again demand and supply yeah, so demand of food will be there and supply is less so food will become expensive so this will kick in inflation as well so you can see here play of current affairs geography economics you know all these things and then if you go to history then as well you can talk about it so i hope uh, this whole topic is uh, clear to you now moving on to another item this one is about reconsider the ban now it is about oxytocin oxytocin is a synthetic version of a human hormone it is considered as a lifesaver uh, particularly for uh, for uh, for pregnant ladies uh, for pregnant women um, because it helps in uh, you know it, it, it stems or it uh, stops this uh, postpartum bleeding after pregnancy uh, this bleeding thing that takes place um, this is you can say blocked or uh, it is uh, it helps in in reduction of bleeding uh, and uh, in our country again if you go through some basic understanding if you if you have good understanding about geography and demography of our country then we know that uh, roughly speaking we can say 50 percent population of our country is ladies and uh, out of this 50 percent we find that uh, uh, every every one out of two ladies so you can say that uh, nearly 50 percent of women in our country they are they are suffering from uh, this thing called lack of blood and at the same time if you are uh, you know if if you are going to have this blood loss uh, after pregnancy then this is going to create big problems uh, not only for that family but for for our country as well because uh, each and every uh, individual citizens are assets right the biggest asset that we have is human beings or our citizens now this particular thing is in news because what government is trying to do government uh, is trying to ban uh, this retail sale and private manufacturing of oxytocin 
and this is a very bad idea because oxytocin as you know it is very important for this medical in medical field at the same time world health organization recommends uh, this oxytocin as a as a very important uh, medicine or drug uh, for for women's health care now the reason why it is in news in news in the sense uh, why government wants to ban it because uh, there are people out there they are misusing this uh, oxytocin what they are doing is they are injecting this oxytocin uh, to their buffaloes and cows and uh, the reason why it is injected it basically helps them in milk production it gives them that extra one liter or half a liter or whatever milk that they can get but there are many studies uh, that are conducted on this thing and uh, studies indicate that uh, uh, injection of uh, this oxytocin in in cattle uh, uh, leads to infertility uh, so this is again not healthy for cows and our milk animals uh, we find nowadays that uh, many items right uh, uh, this vegetables and fruits uh, to e to increase food production to increase this uh, horticulture production that the farmers are using too much chemical nowadays this chemical is going into our system it is entering our body causing cancers and other diseases uh, it will penetrate into our ground or uh, this underground water and uh, it will pollute that water as well it will pollute our soil so this thing is going on at the same time we find that uh, there are people out there they are injecting this sort of things uh, into these kettles and uh, our milk as well is getting you know dirtier or uh, it is having some sort of uh, chemicals in it uh, recently this thing was a this was uh, reported uh, this uh, formaldehyde or formalin was found in in uh, in in various uh, fish right and when i say various i mean to say that uh, fish from various different states from kerala nagaland meghalaya assam uh, we found that uh, these fishes were uh, preserved in this uh, formalin to, to keep them fresh. But formal, formaldehyde or formalin is a carcinogen. That means it can cause cancer. So the need of the hour is rather than banning uh, this oxytocin, what we need to do is we need to provide good health uh, or, or you can say cattle related education to our farmers and uh, people who are in this business of milk production the other thing is food inspection very strict food inspection and uh, very effective food inspection and the whole system is required because you know nowadays we find this thing in every day isn't it in all different parts of our country we find that people are mixing things that are not ethically right that is not uh, good for someone's health but then as well this sort of things are going on so rather than banning a thing that is very important for for the women of our country, it is important to increase inspection and uh, eliminate this sort of misuses. Uh, moving on to another item, it is about this misadventure in education. Misadventure in education is about two things. The first one is hecky and the second one is right to education. If you are a regular follower of this uh, video lecture series, then I'm sure you know many things about, uh, I can safely say, most of the things about Hecky because we have talked about it many a times eh, and we have analyzed it from various different angles as well. Now you have right to education. Again, very quickly, government wants to introduce some changes. A couple of days ago, it was in news. Uh, this thing, we, we have gone through articles. Uh, there was a big article on this thing. So what government wants to do is uh, it wants to give you choice. When I say you, I mean to say states, right? Uh, you will have a situation where in state of Gujarat, uh, there will be I'm just giving a rough example that there will be a detention policy. That means if you don't clear your exam, and we are talking about kids here, right? Uh, fifth standard, sixth standard, seventh and eighth we are talking about. So if you don't clear exam, then if you, if you fail, then you will be given two months time to reappear. And if you reappear and if you fail again, then uh, you will not uh, climb that ladder. You will stay in fifth standard only. And we can have this situation that in other state of our country there is no detention policy going on so there will be exams and all these things will be there but uh, from sixth you will be pushed to uh, from fifth you will be pushed to sixth and seventh and so forth and so, so on and so forth now uh, what's wrong with it uh, means on one side we should allow customization isn't it uh, they can do what they like uh, state governments should be given free hand but if we go through these two reports of national knowledge commission report and yaspal committee on higher education 
they have recommended both this uh, reports uh, have recommended that we need to change this means this sort of touch up uh, or introduction of hecky you know money will be distributed or this grants will be coming from ministry of human resource development so political interference is something that we will find it will uh, promote bureaucracy right a decision taking time will take a decision taking uh, will take more time uh, something that was going on with ugc you know politicization and uh, even if hecky comes out with this higher education commission this commission will decide rules and regulation it will just make sure that you are following that rules and regulations but what types of rules and regulations we are talking about we are talking about uh, we are you know talking that if you don't follow what has been said by hecky then your license can be taken away uh, if you fail standards then uh, the main manager or you can say the main person can be jailed as well so of course good foreign universities they will stay away from our country so we are going to lose uh, expertise because of this hecky so there are many changes that are required political interference should go away uh, if we talk about uh, improvement in RTE, right to education, then the most important thing is, do we have good uh, pupil-teacher ratio? That means student-teacher ratio? Nope. Uh, proper infrastructure like all weather buildings? Do you know in Japan when they have earthquake, people rush towards school, not to bring kids out, but they know that uh, schools are designed in such a way, they are, all the schools in Japan are are earthquake proof right the way they are constructed uh, nothing will happen right even if you have you know that's that's how they look after their schools uh, schools are considered they have food and everything reserved food and drinking water just in case if you know this is how they prepare themselves from disaster for disaster and look at here right uh, we are not having proper infrastructure not even separate toilets uh, for our boys and girls uh, so if we expect to deliver or bring out results in this sort of scenario then uh, we are means we are out of focus uh, so and as far as funds are concerned it takes ages uh, there are so many private schools out there they are not happy with uh, they are you know when they when they provide you a seat in 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 their in their classroom they expect that government will pay uh, for that student and when government is not paying for one year two years you know if it is taking this much time then what they do is uh, they will not the teachers as well they will not pay attention to that child will become a burden for that school and this will also hamper his or her growth uh, moving on to another item it is about a scaled up solution for future it's about water now uh, today we are lucky that we have got uh, good articles about which we have uh, good background information because we have talked about this sort of uh, things uh, in the past as well very briefly uh, do you know that we use more uh, ground water we extract more uh, ground water uh, if, you, if you total the water of uh, ground water use of USA and China uh, together then as well uh, we are far ahead so this is again a very sad thing the other thing is you know the state of recycling most of our big rivers and many small rivers are they there are so many rivers they have died uh, the rivers that we have uh, they are polluted most of them are polluted we hardly find clean you can say uh, pure water in our in our rivers nowadays uh, so this is what we have done with our water recently we have seen this you know pond creating creating ponds and uh, creating uh, these lakes at village level uh, it's a good idea and maharashtra has done very well and then you have telangana and andhra pradesh these two states have done good as well as far as water conservation is concerned but uh, this is not going to help us it's not going to be enough right uh, to make sure that uh, we have enough uh, good clean drinking water water that is available to everyone we have to focus on recycling which is very common thing to understand but uh, at present right uh, we are creating our smart city so it's not going to it's not that we can create all these things in a couple of years it will take time but a thing that we need to do or, or, or a thing that we can do in fact is uh, we can protect our flood plains uh, here you have two pictures here right uh, this is a normal condition and this is flood condition so flood 
plane is basically a range, right? This whole range uh, should be protected. What happens in our country that we are creating this uh, construction right here, right with the river, isn't it? And because of this thing, what happens is that we are destroying this floodplain. Now, importance of floodplain can be understood from this thing here. Himalayan rivers, floodplains, uh, right? Uh, they can they can hold up to 20 times more water than virgin flow in rivers in a year. Can you imagine this thing? They can have, means they do hold huge amount of water. At the same time, it uh, supports uh, this uh, uh, ecosystem. Uh, water will penetrate or sip into the ground as well. So it will recharge our, uh, our ground water table. Uh, if we construct things, uh, once a natural land is made artificial if you construct something then that's it that's gone forever now you cannot convert it back to a natural land so we have to be very careful because land is something that you cannot produce in your factory isn't it uh, you may argue that you can take out sand from here and throw it over there and you can make artificial islands and things like that but imagine this damage uh, that we are creating by doing these things so if we protect our floodplains uh, then we can supply we can have access to good water right uh, good quality water in ample quantity uh, for everyone uh, we need to promote this uh, rainwater harvesting nowadays we find that in new flats or new societies that are created we hardly find this uh, uh, this rules are, are strictly followed rainwater harvesting and we are even today using uh, you can say soft water for f for flushing our toilet which is again a matter of concern we should have a separate pipeline for or supply of water a recycled water should be used for all these activities we can have uh, different categories category a b and c a for drinking b for uh, washing and c for industrial use we can do this thing now other item that we find is uh, this uh, mineral water right uh, which is in trend we find bottles everywhere it's creating pl plastic pollution no doubt at the same time what is happening is we are uh, transporting water from one area um, area in which you have this mineral water we are taking it away and transporting it and distributing it to different parts so if we keep on doing it uh, one day we are going to exhaust uh, this uh, source of mineral water but if we want to have access to mineral water or if we want to uh, make sure that we maintain this uh, source of uh, mineral water then we need to protect our a forest area particularly areas that we have nearby or in the semi urban area or you know in the outskirts of an urban area because if we just uh, protect a 30 square kilometer of forest area then this uh, 30 square kilometer of forest area can uh, can seep or you can say this water coming from different rainfall and you know all these things uh, will penetrate finally into our uh, our groundwater table and uh, it will have all these minerals that are required and uh, 30 square kilometer can support 50 lakh people which is not bad so what we need rather than creating more dams we need to preserve our nature and let it be as natural as possible last item is, is about Congo pay attention to the map of Congo here see uh, Kinsa, uh, Kinshasa uh, is its capital you can see Congo is a country that you can argue that it is in central right in the center of this African continent pay attention to this thing it is not a landlocked country it is sharing its border with Atlantic Ocean now the reason why it is in news is because of this circulating vaccine derived polio virus and let me give you a background about how it works this circulating vaccine derived polio virus when you give uh, this uh, you can say when you when we immunize one child uh, say for example then what we do is we are uh, injecting a uh, weak virus of polio and then the body of that child will create antibodies uh, and uh, that's it right uh, that child will get uh, this uh, shield or pro it will get protected uh, from this uh, from this polio's virus now a place where you don't have good sanitation right what happens is that uh, this uh, due to defecation uh, this virus will of course that particular child will become resilient but uh, this virus will come out isn't it uh, from defecation and uh, then it will spread around uh, it will if you have all your 
kids are 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 immunized then there is no problem but if you have few kids who are immunized and if others are not then this can circulate you know this will create this outbreak of polio and this is something that is happening in Congo it can spread to uh, this Uganda and from there it can spread to other countries as well so the best solution is of course to uh, immunize to increase this vaccination coverage this is the only way and of course we have to work on sanitation or else uh, it can again destroy millions and millions of lives uh, now we are in this news section cabinet clears bill uh, to restore provisions of SCST Act uh, this uh, just help yourself with it it's going to be very easy for you guys and Kerala has uh, strongly supported Supreme Court uh, Kerala is against the government of Kerala is against uh, this uh, Sabrimala temples uh, decision to ban 10 to 50 year old ladies and uh, try has uh, given its green signal for 5g spectrum sale uh, as far as Doklam is concerned uh, Susma Swaraj has said that everything is uh, resolved this conflict has been resolved with the mature or maturity of diplomacy uh, of course, uh, you can say displayed by both the sides. Uh, the building that you can see is uh, called India Club and the government of uh, England has decided that they are not going to redevelop it, uh, right? Uh, they want to keep it as it is. Of course, it is maintained, but uh, history is associated. India League and Independence Movement and all these things are associated. So they don't want to ruin this thing. I Iran has rejected uh, Trump's offer to, for talks and cabinet has given green signal for LIC to take over this IDBI bank. These are your answers. Uh, yesterday I asked you a question about uh, this region here. So you have Yellow Sea, East China Sea and here you have Sea of Japan. Uh, many of you have um, took part in this uh, quiz and you are right that this region is Strait of Malacca. The question, map-based question is give me the capital of uh, this country Brazil and do let me know how many uh, countries are there with which it is sharing its border these are your two questions the right one is uh, of course uh, this descriptive one and one is uh, mcq type uh, that's everything enjoy your studies god bless you all jay hind